Tririn continues being great and I particularly enjoyed the last two episodes and episode 16 in particular really hit me but before we get into that let's get into this week's episode, episode 17. So spoiler warning and all that. 3, 2, 1, let's go. I was quite surprised that Sign left the party so early in the story, so much so that I didn't even really believe it at the beginning. I went and checked on the Freedom Wikipedia to see if he came back to the story, something which I of course will not spoil in this video, but yeah, I was very very surprised by that story decision. In terms of character design, Sign is a bit of a meme because he's clearly the normie in the group of main characters, we have an albino elf, a red-haired warrior, a purple-haired mage, and then we have the normal-looking dude with the goatee, you know, if he had something like green hair or yellow hair, maybe he would have stayed in the party longer. What I really liked about Sign is that he balanced the party's personalities. Fern can be a bit pouty and has a hard time being honest with her own feelings sometimes, Stark is very meek and easily pushed around, and then the oldest of them all, Freeran, is a bit too aloof and doesn't have the biggest people skills, so he really came in and is a good mediator for the interpersonal relationships of the Freeran party. Sign is perfect for this wiser older brother slash uncle type role because he simultaneously has the experience in age where he can act as a sort of authority figure and the emotional awareness that for example Freeran lacks so that he can smooth the relationship dynamics. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the writer removed Sign from the party so early because he wants to have some sort of conflict between the characters and problems quickly get solved when Sign is there. I am still surprised by this decision and I would have liked to see more of Sign even if he had teased that he would leave the party eventually. Besides, it's not like he's a perfect character himself, much like Heiter, he was a corrupt priest and had plenty of character flaws, so I think there was quite a bit of room to explore a lot of character growth even from him. One could also argue that Freeran's party would be too overpowered with the priest healing them, but number one, we have barely explored this world, so maybe there are much stronger enemies to come, and number two, I don't think that Freeran is that type of series, this isn't a battle shonen. I don't watch the new Freeran episode with the mindset of, ooh, I wonder what cool fight they're going to show. Yes, Freeran does have gorgeous animation and has some pretty banger fights sometimes, but it's not a shonen battle like for example Jujutsu Kaisen, it's just not that type of show. Freeran's main strength is the human element, the human moments, as one would expect from a series where the main character is an elf. Sign parting is a bit bittersweet, but we as an audience also understand that it's the right thing. He is now a resolute man inspired by Freeran to live his life the way he wants and not have any regrets, and he has his own mission to accomplish. I like that this is a realistic moment, it's just a part of life. Sometimes even if you like someone very much, they have their own mission and you go your separate ways and it's completely fine. So. Even if it's a bit bittersweet and I it really enjoyed the signed character, I think he was a great addition to the party, I think this episode was very well done. Sign will be missed, but thankfully the remaining characters are also pretty entertaining themselves. For example, Freeran, I love watching her slowly understand human emotion. My favorite magic autist is very entertaining. <laughs> Stop. The relationship between Stark and Fern is also very entertaining, they are two teenagers that don't really quite know how to handle their emotions yet and they don't quite know how to feel about each other or what to do about that, but I love watching their little quibbles and fights and the cute moments they have together, it's a very wholesome relationship. I really enjoy the innocent teen moments like them touching each other's cheeks, it's so innocent but it's also so fun to watch and it's very refreshing because in anime these types of relationships quickly devolve into either stupid fan service, which I personally don't like, or they just devolve into comedy because, you know, authors think that audiences cannot handle feelings for some reason. I really like what they're doing and in the latest episode when Fern was all embarrassed for Freeran holding her hand as any teenager girl would be, I was expecting the oblivious Giga Chad Stark to make the mega move of holding her hand himself, but unfortunately we have yet to have the lewdest moment in all of anime, 
holding hands. Watching these characters grow and develop is by far my favorite part of watching Freerun and like I said in my tier list video, I do think Freerun is super good. I'm not the biggest fan of the episodic storytelling, but I do think the character progression here is marvelous and I'm really looking forward to watch more of it. I do think that I would greatly appreciate if Freerun had a bit of a longer story arc, something that was a bit more storytelling focused, but still I'm really enjoying the episodic format. And you know what they say, if it's working, don't change it. And before I forget, I have to mention Freerun episode 16, which I absolutely loved and it also reminded me of the final episodes of To Your Eternity season 1, which I also enjoyed very much. They introduced this old warrior Vol, who's an acquaintance of Freerun, and initially they play off his old age as a sort of a joke. He even catches Stark off guard and that proves that he's still pretty sharp himself, as Stark is a pretty good warrior, but as the episode progressed, you start to see how dire the situation really is. During his conversation with Freerun, we see that he has forgotten the appearance of his own wife, the person most important to him, and he's also starting to forget real-life events such as the defeat of the Demon King, so we see that his memory is slowly eroding and he's forgetting everything. Obviously, you relate more to things that are closest to you, and if you, like me, know someone in real life that is suffering from these memory loss problems from old age, then this episode really hits like a truck. The moment Freerun realizes Vol's mental state was beautifully directed. You don't have any soundtrack at that moment, the soundtrack stops and you only hear the heavy silence. And Freerun doesn't do a big motion or a big facial expression, she only does a subtle eye movement, which tells you everything you need to know. They handle this scene and character in particular in a very classy way, and out of curiosity I enjoyed this scene and episode so much that I went and read the corresponding chapter of the manga and while still good, I really think that the production of the anime really takes this series to the next level. The animation and the soundtrack just enhance this series so much. There's this recurring theme of memories in this show, and this episode in particular confronts you with the idea that no matter how long your lifespan is, your memories will also eventually fade away, but it presents this in a very gracious and hopeful way. They could have taken an episode such as this one and presented it in a very dark, doom and gloom direction, but instead they go on the more hopeful route. You're feeling uplifted by the end of the episode, which I really appreciate. Freerun manages to inspire you with these intimate vulnerable moments because it doesn't present them as bad things necessarily, it simply presents them as parts of life. Eventually everything ends, people will forget your name and who you are, and even statues will gain rust and mold, but you should still try your best regardless, because life is a beautiful gift. I love the fact that old man Vol still protects the village even if he doesn't remember his wife anymore. He has forgotten a lot of things, but he still remembers his core values, who he is, and I think that's a pretty powerful message by itself. And it's through these interactions and many others throughout the series that Freerun is slowly realizing the importance of memories and the importance of the words that Himmel gave to her when he asked her to remember them. She is now realizing that remembering the people that she cares about is also a form of affection. Or maybe the entire moral of this episode is to give yourself a ridiculous name like Warrior Gorilla so you're less easily forgettable. Who knows? Anyway, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Ciao!